I bet you never thought when we started this video that you'd ever see us putting the trim on, but we're there, we're finally there. And we're gonna start with the outer gunnels. So basically the way this is gonna go is the outer gunnels, the inner gunnels, the, the uh, transom knees and, and the deck, and then we're gonna put some seats in it, and then we're gonna start paddling around. No, rowing around in this case. Okay, so for this particular boat, there's, I'm gonna give you the minimum requirements, and then from there you can go ahead and kind of do your own thing. What I have here is a three quarter inch by one inch piece of stock. It's about 20 feet long and I got a scarf joint in the middle of that to put the, I, put, I took two 10, 10 foot pieces and uh, put them together. Um, and I'm ready to uh, start doing some marking and cutting here. I've got it temporarily clamped up and it is um, ultimately going to be just, just below where the cove is in the top strip there because once this is on and the other side's on, then we can go ahead and sand that down before we put the inner gunnels on, right? Um, so it's temporarily clamped up, and now I have to make some marks up front here so that I can um, get this angle to match the, the uh, outer stem piece, right? Because what we're gonna wanna do is to come right into it and then we'll cut it off flush, and then when we put our decks on, it'll be a nice round over right up here up front. Okay, uh, I got about a foot and a half hanging off the end and that's a good thing because if you blow this cut you can still keep moving it up about an inch and you know you get about 18 shots at it before, before you're going to start with another piece of wood. And if you can't get it in 18 shots you're probably not going to get it anyway. So let's take a closer look at how we make this happen. So you can see that we've got a gap in here kind of a triangle kind of thing. So what we're trying to do is get a cut on this, which is gonna match this angle right here. Simplest way to do that is I got this C-clamp here that's pulling it in tight, not too tight, because you don't wanna bend the boat. And then you just put a straight edge, in this case, a little piece of ash, uh, right up next to it and draw a line. So now what I'm gonna do is take this all off, take it over to the bench, extend this line down, I'm going to transfer this line down this way so that I can go ahead and make a nice clean cut and then it should just be a matter of shifting it up. So let's do that right now. So I'm just going to continue that line on down that we already started. I'm just using a straight edge. Okay. And I'm going to take a simple top of this square here and I am going to transfer that line top to bottom. And the reason I do that is now so I know when I'm cutting this, I need to stay on that line or else I know I'm going to one side or the other. Okay, so quick little trick that I can show you here on how to get this started is just simply use a chisel. And get yourself a little starting point there. This will make it a whole lot easier to get that saw going. Okay, so basically now you're just going to take your Japanese back saw and you're going to ride it in that groove that you get started with the chisel. Alright, so I'm going to cut this and then uh, I'll meet you back over at the boat. Alright, well that's a pretty good fit that we got going there. You don't want to go too nuts with the joinery work here. You want to do a good job and you want to get it real close. But remember, you know, this is going to be trimmed off. There's going to be a deck on top of it. So, you know, if you're off by a 32nd of an inch, Nobody's ever going to see that because it's all going to be buried with the deck and, and uh, you're going to use epoxy with a little bit of thickener so it's all going to fill in anyway. Okay, not encouraging you to do a sloppy job, just telling you don't obsess. Alright, so um, I am going to take this dry fit down now. So from here, what we need to do is take a little bit of 80 grit and scuff up the first inch and a half or so on the outside of the boat. Um, so that the epoxy has, you know, good adhesion, good mechanical adhesion. And then we're going to put clear epoxy on the boat, clear epoxy on the inside of this, uh, and then we're going to use a little bit of thickener, not much, just a little, little bit of thickener, um, you know, just basically to color it so if there's any little potholes in there, it should fill up. And then we're going to clamp it on like Ghanas to God and for good. All right, so... Uh, uh, the spring clamps will get it in place, but that's, you know, you're probably going to need some seat clamps riding around too, so that you can hold it in place. Again, all you're trying to do is when you're done, 
well, two things actually. Uh, when you're done, you want this below wherever the cove is in that first strip because you need to sand down to it and you don't want to have, um, if you're not going to use gunnel caps, you're not going to want to see that cove there, right? And second, whatever you do here, you've got to do exactly the same thing on the other side or else they're going to be off, right? Okay, so let me start mixing epoxy yet again um, and we'll get this put onto the boat. Well, I thought I'd use this opportunity to go over just a few more epoxy basics while I'm doing this. So the idea here is to get this piece of wood to stick to the boat, right? And the boat, the boat, it is a wooden boat, but effectively at this point it's a fiberglass boat. So what we want to do, as a matter of course here, is we want to paint the epoxy onto the wood first because we want it to give it a chance, especially because it's a hardwood, we want to give it a chance for the epoxy to penetrate into the wood before we go ahead and slap it up on the side of the boat here. So that's what I'm doing. Second thing you're going to notice is that I'm doing this over the boat. And I would normally probably do this anyway, even though I've got 50 foot long benches here. I'd probably do this anyway because, well, I mean, it's easier to transport once the epoxy's on it and all that. Um, so what you have to do is just be really careful. So unless you have a very, very large shop and a very, very large bench, you're going to be doing it the same way that I'm doing it right now. So just be careful that you're not dripping down into the boat and uh, get that first layer of epoxy on there. It's going to be a little bit springy, so go slow and uh, get on there. Okay, next, when I had this up on the boat and dry fitted, I probably should have showed you, but I didn't, I put a registration mark somewhere around the middle of the boat. So once I was happy where it hit on the front and how the bevel was cut and all that, I took a, little, a pencil and put a little tick mark right there down by the center of the boat. And what that does is, you know, once the epoxy's on here, you get a lot less leeway of sliding it around, moving it around and all that kinds of stuff without making a heck of a mess. So when you put the tick mark on there, now I know that when I go ahead and put this back on the boat, I just line the mark up on the gunnel with the mark on the boat, and in theory, the front should be exactly where it ought to be. At least that's what I'm betting, and that usually works out just fine. Okay, so I've got clear epoxy paint on the gunnel. Now I'm going ahead and I'm going to paint some clear epoxy on the side of the boat. Keep in mind that, uh, you know, effectively it's a fiberglass boat at this point. It doesn't really need to penetrate. Matter of fact, it can't penetrate, right? So that's why we scuffed it up with the uh, 80 grit paper. Uh, if you've got any, any little bumps or anything in there, now's a good time to take those out. Uh, so I'm just going to take this one inch brush and I am going to paint some epoxy right on the boat. And then we're going to put some gloves on and get this out of gunnel attached to the boat. And you're going to see, and I know, you know, we get a lot of emails from people that freak out a little bit when they see all this cloudy stuff show up when they start the sand. And you should have noticed by now that when I put fresh epoxy over that cloudy stuff, it just disappears, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So the reason we did the uh, filler coats on the outside of the boat is because when we sand, we want to make sure that we're not sanding down into the cloth and cutting the cloth. We just want to be sanding the outer epoxy layer. So on this boat, I've got a couple of filler coats rolled onto it. So it's nice and thick. And so it made the whole process kind of simple. All right. So you want to be generous here and uh, make sure you get plenty of epoxy on there. Uh, but you certainly don't want it dripping down the sides of the boat, so that is not the goal. The other thing that I've told you, and it uh, bears worth repeating, is um, that fiberglass is sharp, sharp, sharp. So uh, you'll notice that when we started working on this boat today, the glass that came from the inside up over the side was already cut, and then I took my... Uh, my sure form tool, my rasp, and I went down the edges and I got rid of all the sharp stuff so that I wasn't cutting myself while I was working on this gunnel. Um, hopefully you're not one of those people that needs to learn the hard way because 
There's no doubt about it. You will cut, and there's nothing worse than a fiberglass splinter. All right. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of wood flour, put it in here, and then I'm going to put it on the outside, excuse me, on the gunnel that we've already painted. I'm going to put some gloves on, and we're going to go ahead and attach that gunnel to the boat. Tick marks right there, which lines up with that. And uh, this should be pretty simple. A couple of parting thoughts here before I move on to my second gunnel, or my second outer gunnel. Uh, it, it, you know, I keep saying it, clean up, clean up, clean up when you're working with epoxy because cleaning up's a lot easier than sanding later. So you are going to inevitably have stuff dripping down the side of your boats coming from <coughs> this glue joint that you just put together, right? So um, grab a, uh, a spreader, go on in there, clean it all up, um, and you'll be good to go and as much as you can clean between these clamps. So you notice that I went from spring clamps to seat clamps, right? Spring clamps are great for getting it up there and fitting and all that kinds of stuff, but when it comes time to actually attach it to the boat, you're gonna wanna use seat clamps. Um, so a couple of thoughts on that. You know, I, you, you can, you know, for me, I'm gonna move on to my next gunnel because I've got three more milk crates full of seat clamps. Um, you can use screws on the inside temporarily. I'm not a big fan of that, <laughs> primarily because on a boat like this, on a canoe it's fine, small tiny boats it's fine, um, because you're not going to be putting a lot of stress on the gunnels. On a, on a boat like this, you're going to be rowing, maybe sailing, so there is going to be some stress on the gunnels. And if I put screws in every six or eight inches now so that I can take these clamps off and move on, and then I come back and I put my inner gunnel on and I screw through to that, I'm almost perforating the thing all the way down, which you gotta believe is gonna weaken it, right? So I'm not a huge fan of that, um, and, and frankly, I wouldn't do it. Uh, on the inside of this boat, uh, a lot of our boats online, you see scuppers. Scuppers are an inner gunnel with little holes every couple of inches all the way down. They look beautiful. Um, years past, primarily what it was for, especially for wooden boats, is you know as water got in there you'd want to be able to tip it up and let the water get out and if you have a solid inner gunnel the water couldn't necessarily get out completely right because there's no way to hop up over the gunnel so you put scupper holes in between there and the water runs right out the problem i have with that on this particular boat and and i'm a big fan i love them and matter of fact we have a website that shows you how to make them um, on this particular boat, think about what we're going to be doing, right? We're going to have eight, eight and a half foot oars and spoons, and we're going to be torquing on this thing. So I want the gunnel system on this to be as stiff as possible so that the boat's not flexing as I'm rowing on it. And same thing, if I put a sail in the front of this thing and I'm putting stays going down, I don't want them pulling on something that's not solid, right? I'm going to want to bolt right through it, and I'm going to want it to be as solid as possible. That being said, there are people out there that are going to disagree with me. That's fine. Um, you know, if you put them in, I'm sure it'll work just fine. Uh, I'm just, I, I just prefer to have this as stiff as possible when I'm going to be rowing it. So, um, what's going to happen in the outer gunnels? I'm going to put another one over there. Um, when the boat is almost completely done, we're going to flip the boat back over and put it on saw horses, and we're going to put a fillet 
between the gunnel and the boat itself. Why are we doing that? Well, because over time, you know, water has got a nasty way of getting into places that it shouldn't get into. Uh, up here in the northeast, or the, or the, or the, uh, uh, the northwest, or any place where it gets hot and cold, you know, water gets into places, it freezes, it expands, and it tends to make things separate, right? So we're going to put a fillet that's going to go all along this gunnel on the underside where it connects to the boat, and that's going to keep water from ever getting in there. Nice, neat, clean fillet. And no, no fiberglass, just the fillet itself. And then when we, when we um, varnish or paint the outside of the boat, it'll seal it all off really nice and you should be good to go for years and years and years to come. Um, and that will finish this off. So I need to put my transom knees in and the transom knee is what goes from here to here. And traditionally it's on larger boats, boats uh, with a lot of torque on the transom. And what it does is it keeps uh, it gives you a little bit more um, stability for the transom pulling away from the boat. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, on a boat like this, it's mostly for looks. And, and they are pretty, so I'm going to put them in. Um, but there's not going to be a lot of talk on this transom. I may have a tiller on it if I sail it, but there's not going to be a lot of talk there. So, and I've already got my tape seam down in here, and I still need to put fiberglass here. So, you know, it is a looks thing. So I'm going to have transom knees that are going to come out to about here, and then my anti transom is going to go up, and we're going to start to construct our, uh, our uh, deck supports up there. Um, once all that's done, and I put a deck on the boat, you know, then the options, you know, really kind of vary. And, you know, one thing that I've done in the past that's worked out really well is I will put what's called a uh, gunnel cap on. So once the inner and the outer gunnels is on, this is going to be three quarter, three quarter, and a quarter, right? Because I got three quarter on the outside, three quarter on the inside, quarter inch thickness of the boat. So that gives me what, inch and a half, inch and three quarters. If I want to, I can take, I can take a one quarter inch by inch and three quarter stock, whether it's mahogany or ash, and I can cap the gunnel all the way around. And I've done this in the past. Uh, as a matter of fact, on the video, I did uh, a DVD for the Bayhawk, which is a double paddle canoe. And I put gunnel caps on that, and they come out beautiful. And, and effectively, what you're doing is, you know, when you cap it, I take the bead, the same thing that you used to do a bead on the strips, and I bead both sides. And it gives you a nice little detail along the side there. So the cap has got, it comes up and it beads around and it goes on the other side and does the same thing. Um, all of that just serves to continually stiffen and join the boat together. Don't need them, but they do look nice and it'll cover up the core of the boat if that bothers you. Uh, and it'll make them a little bit stiffer for rowing. All right. Okay, so I'm going to throw the gunnel on the other side and then we're going to give this a little bit of time to dry. Uh, and then we're going to start working on the inside. Coming along nicely. <laughs>